the eight-episodes format has always been Bridgerton's biggest problem as it limits the series from diving into important plot points at length, but it's no more apparent than in this particular season where everything felt so rushed and condensed and poorly fleshed out. Let me start off by saying that I haven't read the books, so this won't be a comparison to the source material, nor will I be talking about the costuming, because I have no knowledge on that front. I'm a child when it comes to fashion, I just see colors, and I'm easily entertained. My focus will be mainly on the luckluster writing and the disappointing characterization of certain characters. Before we get into it, let me speed run through what I did enjoy this season. The star of the season, and for a good reason. I think the writers did a good job with her character. We got to understand her motivations for running the Lady Whistledown column, though it was obvious from the start, admit her faults for the things she wrote about Marina and Eloise, and apologize for it. Apparently in the book, Penelope loses a bit of weight, and that's what catches Colin's attention, and I'm so, so glad they changed that, because not only is Penelope perfect the way she is, it's important for her and for the viewers to see her loved for who she is and how she looks. Nicola Coughlin is the most gorgeous person after all. Changing anything about her is a cardinal sin. You know, it is hard, because I think women with my body type, women with perfect breasts, don't. <laughs> I don't know how things went for the Featheringtons in the books, but I loved what they did with them this season, especially with the gradual growth of Penelope and her mother Portia's relationship. It was a lovely touch to put a mirror onto their relationship for them to realize that they're essentially the same person, as in, a woman trying to protect herself from the harsh winds of society. I'm the biggest Canthony supporter, and every bit we got to see of them this season brought me immense joy. Seeing puppy-eyed Anthony just obsessively in love with his wife is enough serotonin to keep me going for a month or two. Benedict's pansexuality is finally being explored after that we've seen from season one. I didn't know if we'd ever get to that, but the writers for once remembered the seeds they planted in previous seasons. Out of all the Bridgerton siblings, Benedict and Eloise are the most free-thinking and queer-coded in my eyes, so I'm happy they went in that direction for Benedict. Now, will they do the same for Eloise? Considering the trajectory of Francesca's romance from the little snippet we got in the last episode, I highly doubt it. Now, let's jump straight onto what I didn't like. Let's get it out of the way. Colin was boring this season. Yes, he's very loving, sensitive, kind, and every positive adjective you can think of to describe a man. He's a green flag, but that doesn't make him any less boring to watch. Let me be clear, his positive traits aren't what made him boring. It's the writing of his character, or rather, lack of, because who the hell is Colin Bridgerton this season? I genuinely have no idea, and that's my biggest gripe with season three. Everything we know of Colin is of glimpses of him from previous seasons, and when we finally get to his season where he's supposedly one of the main characters, instead of learning more about him as an individual, instead of delving deeper into why he changed at the start of the season and why he felt the need to change in the first place, we get almost nothing. The writers put the limelight on Penelope's story, as they should, but completely forgot about Colin in the process for some reason. What do their scenes serve aside from stealing screen time from the main story? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I won't elaborate further. The biggest offender this season, and the main reason why so many scenes felt so weirdly unfinished, was the shoddy editing. I saw on Twitter some behind the scenes of the Poland dance scene, and it boggles my mind why they even thought of cutting a large portion of it. Look at the material. You should be going home You can anyway. be the judge of it. Some scenes don't even work together in transition. Take episode 7, for example, when they kept cutting to the thruple schmeck scene every couple of minutes, disrupting the tension of prior scenes. It's almost comical how we'd go from intense scenes where everyone is worried Cressida would out Penelope as Lady Whistledown, 
And then we go back into the three sexy tears having their little bed party. Have they been going at it all day? That's my only question. No, wait, I do have another question. Where did they get the stamina for all that smashing? For three seasons straight, we've seen so little of Eloise's growth. She's a character that I have mixed feelings about, but I won't get into that here. But from what we've seen of her this season, it doesn't feel like she changed much. She's still as self-absorbed as ever. She was completely oblivious to Penn's feelings for her brother for years, and when she heard the news of their engagement, she went as far as accusing Penn of befriending her to get to Colin. She also disregarded Cressida's concerns about marrying an old man because she was too focused on revealing Lady Whistledown's identity to Colin, and when Cressida asked for her help, she shut her off and broke off their friendship when Cressida, similar to Penelope and Portia, was just trying to protect herself. This isn't to defend Cressida in any way. She wrote harmful accusations about the Bridgertons and bullied Penn throughout all seasons, so she is by no means a good person. But just like Penn and Portia, she was a woman looking out for herself, desperately trying to protect herself, and Eloise still considered her a friend at the time, so it was interesting to see Eloise, once again, turn a blind eye to her friend's problems. I don't know what I expected from the Lady Whistledown reveal, but it certainly wasn't what happened. It was this monumental buildup that went nowhere. They made it seem like the stakes were high. They had my girl pen having panic attacks and fainting because she was terrified of the consequences of her reveal, but it all culminated into nothing. The queen forgave her so easily, none of the women in the ton during the ball confronted her or hurled insults at her. No one had much of a reaction, honestly. So why was it a big deal in the first place? I am very open to a queer relationship in the Bridgerton universe, and I'm very happy that they're exploring a lesbian relationship at that. But Michaela was introduced way too soon in my opinion. We spent the entire season watching Francesca and John quietly fall in love with each other. A slow but tender kind of love that matched their pace and brought them comfort. Watching Fran defend that love to her mother was so sweet but then Michaela enters the scene and suddenly Fran forgets her name, a parallel to Violet's first meeting with her late husband Edmund. I don't know where this is going, but I hope and pray and plead that they don't go with an emotionally cheating plot for Fran's story. I want her love for John to be as real as her love for Michaela when Francesca's season comes. Don't get me wrong, I liked this season, but I can't help but think of how much better it could have been. I desperately wanted to love it, because the friends to lovers trope is one of my favorites, but they unfortunately missed the mark with this one. Still, I am hopeful that season four might bring some improvement to the series and so excited for Benedict's love story to start.